one out of ten people happy. Check the forum. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. You're on level three. Well, you're probably not on level three. You might be on your couch, beanbag, or other. I'm Jamie. I live mainly in a world of PlayStation. I do love my PlayStation, and I do love a slice of lemon in my Corona, but that is completely irrelevant. Level 3 would be proportionately less whole if I wasn't joined each and every week by this gentleman to help me out. He likes a good stout as he is stout. He is as astute as he is her suit. And his oral skills are such that he would have been a star in the Roman forums. If you don't know what the original Roman forums are, look it up or just play Shadows of Rome. But that's irrelevant because I want to introduce you to my friend, Jason. Could the Romans find the little man in the boat? I ask you. <laughs> there we go. Gotcha. <laughs> we got a PG rating in it and we're sticking to it. But today's episode is going to be very, very good because I'm looking at some NBA 2K8, which is quite cool. We're, we're going back to an old review. Yes, going back yes. in time. I kept getting emails about Brawl and so I made the compromise with the drunken editor. I said, look, there's a juice box in, in it for you if you just cut up the old app, put the Brawl review in it. He's happily sitting with his juice box. Footage might be a little bit shaky, but it'll yeah, be fine. Yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. But um, that was back in the heydays of, what, March? Yes, exactly. Back, where, where, where? Back, when, back when petrol was a mere dollar sixty, yeah. 60 a litre. <laughs> um, and um, also Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, really? That came out. I didn't, I yeah. didn't realise. Yeah, I wasn't aware of it either. It just snuck up. But, uh, it snuck up. See? Snuck up. Topical. Nice. Topical. Huh? Yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go to our first review. Why not? I think it's time. Smash Brothers is coming to the Wii. Go! Dailanto Smash Brothers X. Ah, good old Melee. It brings back so many memories. I remember when it first came out on the N64 and I just picked it up on a whim. I put a pre-order down, I picked it up and from that moment on, I was in love with Smash Brothers. And so that brings me to my review of Smash Brothers Brawl on the Wii. That's right, I believe we're the first Australian media outlet to review Brawl on the Wii because we don't have any backing. If you want to back us, please, then we'll listen to your release dates. But until then, let's go into Brawl now. For all those people out there who, who haven't picked up a copy of it before, this is probably the definitive one. You don't really need to have picked up any of the others to come into this. It's not like there's a, a progressive story or anything like that. It's just about Nintendo mascots kicking the crap out of each other. And realistically, that is, that is all sorts of win. Uh, there's, there's nothing that can be lost with Nintendo mascots bashing each other. Uh, so if you're a Nint Nintendo fanboy, you've probably already picked it. You're probably already organising a freeloader and picking it up or whatever the case may be, or you, you're waiting patiently for that non-existent release date. But if you're not a Nintendo fanboy, I'm going to try and aim it at you. Um, all of your favourite characters are here. Mario, Link, Donkey Kong, you know, Samus from the Metroid series. With some newcomers as well, of course, Snake and Sonic and all these great you know, uh, extra characters as well from, uh, from, from Nintendo's history. The thing that did really disappoint me though was the, the complete roster, which I'm not going to ruin for you. The complete roster um, kind of lacked a few people. There were a few people there that I thought, you know, an extra third party character would have been great. There's no Mega Man, that, that I will ruin for you. You know, just there's some things that they really could have done better. And I don't know, look, for, even, that said, the roster's fantastic. There's 35 characters. They're all very, they're fairly well balanced. I mean, Marth is still as cheating in character as he ever was. Um, and Ike seems really overpowered, but that's for all the, uh, the Super Smash Brothers heads who actually, you know, play competitively and seriously. But if you just want a fun game, this is the way to go. They've got, there's a new mode on it as well, which is the, uh, the subspace emissary. And it's a, a story mode, a, pla a side-scrolling platformer. Um, and look, it's a bit of fun. There's some fun to be had there, but it's not going to stop the world. And you're certainly not going to buy the game for, for subspace emissary. Realistically, you can finish in about six hours anyway. However, it is a very easy way to unlock all the characters. All the characters would normally take, you know, you have to do all these extra matches and stuff like that. Now, they're very quick. You don't even have to worry about any of that whatsoever. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a handy in that sense. The multiplayer has still always been the same. The new exception, the new addition to that, of course, is the Final Smashes. Everyone has their own specific Final Smash move, which is like the super powerful destructing move. Um, you know, Snake fires, fires grenades out of a grenade launch. Um, Samus shoots a massive, you know, plasma beam. There's all, they've all got their own specialty things, and it's, it's, it really does add to the, the, you know, the strategy of it, because you've got to try and figure out how to use everyone's special move to their advantage. The other thing as well is it's slowed down a fair bit from Melee. It's not as fast as it once was, but that's just one of those incidental things. I'll get down to some scores and just give you what I think. Now, the graphics on this for a, for a Wii game are fairly good. It's, it isn't really much of a step up from the GameCube, but that said, the Wii itself isn't much of a step up from the GameCube. So it's, it's kind of keeping itself on par. Um, 
It looks fantastic. The characters are very well modeled. Everything going on in the background looks fantastic. The whole, the effects, the graphics, they all look really good. So I'm going to give the visuals on this one an 8.5 out of 10. Now the sound, uh, the music in this is absolutely fantastic. Buy this for the soundtrack alone. The, it's mind-boggling. They are just absolutely fantastically orchestrated tracks. Even the ones that aren't orchestrated still sound really well done, remixed and you know remastered. They sound fantastic. Um, you know, and all, all the usual character grunts and stuff like that are there. But you weren't playing this for the actual sound. Um, so look, once again, the sound I'm going to give a nine out of ten just for the music alone. The music is fantastic, and the gameplay. Gameplay is that same old Smash Brothers gameplay. So if you didn't like it before and you thought it was too kiddie a game, you're not going to like it now. So just you know. Keep going. It's it's not your game. Those of you who who are willing to try a different kind of fighting formula, or you know, if you're an old Smash head, you're gonna love it. It's the same. It's very much the same deal. The new assist trophies add to it. The new items add to it. Everything adds to it to make it the most rounded uh, Smash Brothers experience so far. So the gameplay, I'm gonna give a 9.5 out of 10. That's gonna bring us to about a nine even, and that's probably fair. Look, for the, the Nintendo fanboy in me wants me wants to give it a 10, um, but realistically there are some limitations to it. It's not gonna appeal to everyone. It's a little bit too cutesy at times. It does still have its problems, like Subspace Emissary is not as good as it should be and stuff, but if you love your Smash Brothers, you could certainly do a lot worse than playing Brawl. Yo, yo, people, what's up? Welcome to the courts. Here I am. I am LL Cool Jamie. I hear you ask, why they call you LL Cool Jamie? They call me LL Cool Jamie because the first L's for my legs. I am fast, baby. I am so fast. You won't even catch me. I will come into your zone and be gone before you even know it. The second L's because I'm really good at coding Linux, but that's kind of irrelevant. Look. I've been playing b-ball since back in the day when Michael Jackson was black, baby. I've coached some rookies in my time. Sure I have. And this skinny little black boy come up to me and say, Yo, LL -L Cool J, I ain't got no moves. Can I have some of your style? And I'm like, yeah, man, I feel you. I can give you some of my styles. I can show you how to be the best, baby. That boy then stopped getting cut from his high school basketball team. That's right. That's right. That was Michael Jordan. He came to me. I gave him his blow. This time, I was in Australia. This lanky, tall, slow, white guy that couldn't jump, he came up to me. He said, LL Cool Jamie, I need some moves. I need some skills. He says, my daddy tried to teach me, but his skills ain't nowhere near. Nowhere near as good as what yours are. I teach him. Now that boy... Andrew Gaze, he got to play in the Olympics, baby! Look, look, I am too busy to be out there coaching every rookie that needs some hints. So, look, I'm out there making my own paper, doing my own thing, baby. So if you want to get some basketball skills, I suggest you get your hands on NBA 2K8 on your PlayStation 3. And maybe you get some moves like these. You watch this. You watch this, y'all. LL Cool Jamie. Okay. Um, I, I'm Jamie, and I'm looking at NBA 2K8 on your PlayStation 3. This is, of course, your standard fair NBA game. It's got your season modes, your career modes, your uh, playoffs modes, and all the usual goodies are in there. But probably the most fun was in blacktop mode. Now there, you got to you got to play on the streets. You were playing one on one, two on two, three on three, a whole lot of slam dunk contests. There was a lot of different stuff in there. Now, is this going to go down in the Hall of Fame as a classic NBA game, or is this one going to go to the bin as one would rather forget? That's what I'm going to find out today. The visuals on the court are all very standard fare. It's your normal NBA game. It doesn't look any different. I haven't seen any sort of real enhancement of, of game, the NBA games from the last few years. But the crowd, I did feel that there was a difference. The crowd seemed to be moving individually of each other. They were moving as a bunch of individuals as opposed to 
one big synchronized crowd all standing up at the same time doing the same thing. There was none of that and that was good to see. They weren't also just painted on, which is something that I appreciate as well. But in the visuals, I felt really let down by the coaches. Now when they do cutaway shots to the coaches, um, they just looked blocky, not very realistic and, and these were just almost little animation sequences and I, I really felt like they could have done a lot more there but they didn't they've obviously just used the same game engine to make the coaches as they have to make the players the players themselves well that brings me to that uh they they are recognizable but they're not extremely recognizable and i wouldn't say that they look very realistic either and they're quite small on the screen there so the visuals for me are getting a 5.5 out of 10. now on to the sound the commentary is quite detailed and I, and I really did appreciate how that was done and they've also integrated all the voice clips into each other very very well so no more do we hear what a great spin move by Shaquille O'Neal it was it was none of that it actually all flowed very nicely and sounded like a proper sentence that a real person would put together how good is that the uh, the music had that whole sort of cool urban kind of thing happening to it but I would have really liked some more, some more exciting, some more, some more energetic music. Cause I, I'm not laid back all the time when it's a close match, and uh, and and the scores, the scores are tied, and we're down to the last, you know, minute of the game. I just would have wanted something more powerful there, but I didn't get it. But look, for me, the highlight of the audio though, is is the commentary during the dunk competition, and this is something also in the blacktop mode. The 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 announcer MC guy of the slam dunk contest is fantastic his his voice clips are integrated absolutely perfectly so he says the player player name in the sentence in the correct context with the correct tone the whole thing sounds very very good so the sound on this one is scoring seven out of ten so the season modes are there the playoff modes all the things that you'd expect in your standard nba games are there but the most fun to be had was in the blacktop mode now here you could have the there was the slam dunk competition that I've talked about there was a three-point shootout and there was street games where you would play one-on-one -on -one, two on two three on three and you got to choose any players on the roster that you liked and this was fantastic fun I mean having having a two-on-two -two match Shaquille O'Neal Detlef Schramm versus Hakeem Olajuwon and Gary Payton I mean you know it's just, Wilt Chamberlain was thrown in there at one time. So much fun to be had in that mode. Now, online the game worked quite well. Never had a problem getting a match and it seemed to run quite nicely. The only thing with the gameplay for me is that the controls just felt a little sluggish. So I felt like my decision making time was really cut down. Like I had to anticipate when someone was going to shoot to go up for the block there. But even so, look. There are its problems there, but hardcore NBA fans are probably going to pick this one up anyway. Gameplay can only get 6 out of 10. Now, as I'm saying, this one is for the hardcore fans. You've got to absolutely live and breathe your NBA game to want to pick this game up. There's faults there, but for me, the blacktop mode absolutely makes it, and the online play does have a lot of fun there. So I'm scoring this one overall at a 5.9 out of 10. So as I've said, this one is for the hardcore NBA fans out there. You're probably not going to listen to me and you are going to get this one anyway. The season mode and the career modes really don't offer much that we haven't seen before. But the blacktop mode certainly does have some fun to be had there. All I can give this one though is a 5.9 out of 10. What's that man? That's all you're giving the game? Oh man, you must be a hater. Tell you what, Diva, don't listen to this guy's score. If you get this game, all right, all you right. can customise it. LL Regardless cool of what your own team. LL you the Cool best Jamie team. says, the, best the views and, ex the views the and power, opinions expressed and by him don't reflect those there. of hey, level hey, three. Hey, wait, or if me. you call LL Cool Jamie, that this game's worth 12 out of 10. That's people's. it. Don't hate the player, baby. Hate the game. <laughs>
What the hell do you mean you couldn't afford the rest of the camo? Oh, the hell was it? Drunken editor can't even get me all the rest of the camo. Hang on, what was it? Magic beans. On the way to it, he bought magic beans instead. Do you see what I put up with? See, uh, anyway, I'll do a Metal Gear Solid review anyway. It can't be the fancy dancy one I wanted to do, but beggars can't be choosers. Now, Metal Gear Solid is one of those games that you either love or hate. It's, it, it really splits the audience. There's some people who love its, you know, winding story and its, you know, um, its explosive cutscenes, um, its stealth gameplay. Then there's other people who I like to call morons who think that it's too slow, um, takes too long. You know, it starts to bore people after a while. Actually, I won't call them morons. It's probably a bit unfair. Then again, if you play Splinter Cell, you go straight back in the moron category. Um, it's, it, it's really one of those things that divides the community. Um, there's enough people in, in the community that love the game, but there's just there's enough out there that really hate it. You know, Zomga, Halo is tear better because I can shoot things more, more often. This really addresses that whole issue of not, not being able to play the game you want to play. Because in this one, the gunplay is actually a lot of fun. Uh, I found myself in my first playthrough going crazy with it, buying M16s, all, uh, buying M4s, all the attachments, just going nuts, killing everyone, and I've never done that in a Metal Gear Solid game, never has a Metal Gear Solid game to me been thought of like, hey, there's some, there's some guards, let's toy with them so I can shoot them in the head, it's always been, let's sneak up, tranquilize them, or hold them hostage or something, uh, this one is really much more about play how you want to play it, and I've, it's something I really appreciate, I think it's more to do with um, Ryan Payton becoming more involved with the team, um, when Kojima was in it, it had a very Japanese control style and Japanese directions and stuff like that. But now that Ryan Payton's involved, uh, it seems to have picked up that little bit of a Western influence. And it's not necessarily for the worst. Like, people who think that this game is going to be, you know, too far removed from Metal Gear Solid to make it, you know, the same kind of game, it, it's a wrong idea to understand. There's still your, uh, your half an hour long cutscenes, and there's more than one of them. Um, and see, that's the thing. We didn't get a copy, so we're not under the NDA. So we can let you know about how long the cutscenes are. There's, there's at least a couple worth a, a half an hour each. So remember, guys, if you, if you, if you want to get straight back into it, you can always skip the cutscenes now, which is something else that Ryan Payton introduced. So thank you, Ryan Payton. So I'm going to get down to some scores now. And I really don't think I'm going to give this a final score. You guys all know how much I love Metal Gear Solid. So I really find it a moot point to actually score it. Um, because you know I'm going to give it something high, you know I'm going to call it my game of the year so far, um, and I really don't think anything's going to knock it off, but I'll give you some scores and visuals to give you a comparison and stuff like that. So the visuals are probably some of the best in the industry at the moment. Um, the emo level of emotion in the faces, um, you know, just everything, uh, the, way, the way it looks, the cinematic feel of it, even when you're playing in, in normal gameplay, looks fantastic. The explosions, everything looks really, really good. Uh, so for the, I uh, just uh, without speech, um, you know, every every wrinkle moves when they're talking. Their bodies flow exactly how you'd expect them to if they were talking. Um, so I don't know what to say. The visuals, are mind-bogglingly good, mind-bogglingly good. For the graphics, I'm going to give 9.7 out of 10. Now, the sound. Once again, this is a Metal Gear Solid game, so the sound is always going to be top-notch, particularly the voice acting. Now, this can be a, both a positive and a negative because if there's some voices you don't like, they can really grate on you. Meryl from Metal Gear Solid 1 was a perfect example of this. I couldn't stand Meryl in number one. Debbie Mae West, who plays Meryl, has really pulled her finger out in this one. Uh, she's a much better character. She, um, <laughs> it's, Actually, it's a terrible line, pulled her finger out. Anyway... Um, it's, yeah, uh, she's really done a good job with the voice acting on this one. You actually start to care about what she has to say. In the other one, she just annoyed me. Uh, in this one, I actually, I actually cared what she had to say. So um, the sound, everything, the guns sound chunky. Depending on which gun you are, they, they change sounds. Everything sounds fantastic. The sound in this is another just stunning highlight. Um, and, you know, I, I really think that this is probably one of the best sounding games ever as well. So I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Now the gameplay. As I say, it, it's not really about sneaking around as much as it used to be. It used to be they kind of forced you to sneak um, because, you know, the, the gunplay wasn't as good uh, because you actually couldn't fight back. I mean, you could in, in, in limited circumstances. You know, if you had two guys, you might be able to take them out with a pistol or whatever. But three or four guys and you're in trouble. Uh, in this one, you can wipe out waves of guys. You just keep keep on fighting, kill geckos, kill everything, just because of how much they've improved the shooting. So the shooting is is top notch in this one as well. There are a couple of things about the game that really irritated me. Um, later on, you go back to a place where um, you've been before. I won't say any more than that. Um, and there's just not as much human life as I expected. Uh, you'll see when you get there. You'll know what I mean. But that's probably one of my biggest complaints. The second one is. The gunplay, while fantastic, is probably a little bit underused for my taste. Like, 
I'd expect the, the the fighting areas to be a bit more open, but it goes hand in hand with that whole Metal Gear Solid thing. Um, and finally, Metal Gear Online, the Konami ID system can just go to hell because uh, as much as I want to play Metal Gear Online, I couldn't even log on. Couldn't even log on. So I gave up. So I didn't even try Metal Gear Online. So I'm going to give the gameplay on this one a 9.5. Now, work out your own aggregate scores from that one, um, but just be advised, I'm not going to really score it. There's no point. Um, so far, it's my game of the year. I stand by that. Um, and it's it's got mu- it's, it, at, at this point, being you know nearly two weeks after it's come out, I'm still playing it. That's more than I can say for GTA. The highly anticipated MGS got the rap that we all knew it would. Yeah, and I, I was I'll probably a bit i probably a bit harsh calling people morons who don't like it, which I'll take back. But Splinter Cell still sucks, nuts. Sorry. <laughs> and and going back to the previous review, that LL Cool Jamie was so lame. I, well, I don't know where the producer finds these guys. I really don't. No, well, this is not good. Uh, they, they usually disappear in trucks. <laughs> they do. I don't know if we'll ever see the, the return. Actually, we, we need a petition or something. No <laughs> more LL Cool Jamie ever again. Speaking of things that that don't happen very often, I don't know. That's not a very good segue. I think it's time to give a head award out. Why Thanks, not? Thanks, thing. <laughs> um, the head award. This it's been a while since we've had one. Yes. But I received an email and a photograph, actually, as evidence. It's always good to have evidence for these things. From a young gamer by the name of Dave. Dave's from Cranbourne in here in Victoria, I'm pretty yes. sure. Yeah. Now, he actually went <laughs> camping. With our national television show. <laughs> he actually went camping and took a generator, a petrol power generator, specifically for his PlayStation 2, so that he could play PlayStation while on camping. And with the price of fuel... <laughs> That must have cost him yeah. an inordinate amount of yeah, money to run. He could run. have bought a PS3 with that money. He probably could have. So, I mean, so Dave from Cranman, Gamer of the Week, head award for you. <laughs> it's all good times. And I think we've reached the end of another episode here we on have, Level 3. We have. Um, anything you want to mention? Forums, <laughs> podcasts, the usual crap. Um, thank you for anyone <laughs> who went to um, the, uh, the the night the other the other week. Um, yeah. You know, thanks a little, you know, I don't know who else to thank. It's really, you know, what else do we mention? Um, you could thank God, if you like. Oh, I guess. <laughs> right. uh, he, work, he works through us, not, not in spite of us, so. Um, <laughs> On that I, note, I, 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 think, I honestly think he's picked someone better than us, but, you know, hey, you never know. <laughs> on that note, it really is time to go. Thank you very much for joining us here on Level 3. And until next time, please continue to game on. Deep within the U.S. Army exists an elite force deployed for precise tactical operations. These are the men. Who are totally not the guys I was just talking about. I know what I'm doing. This is a shortcut. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. If I had a penny for every time you said that, I wouldn't be needing this gold. Hey, welcome to the sandbox. You smell very clean. The army's launching on offensive, and we're going to be the first ones to go in. Haven't they got guys specially trained for that? Well, yeah.